Hello my lovely ones, welcome in to Cleo Ra. This is a tarot station where I really live the keys of tarot. I really do practice what I preach. I live in perfect free will and I encourage others to do the same. My job is to help people tweak their consciousness from 3D to 5D or from what they could call the lower portions of the tree of life to the top of the tree of life. And I know a lot of my viewers are already there. So hey babies, hey initiates. So that being said, we're going to dive into what someone is creating. This is all about paradise. It's all about bringing the kingdom of heaven onto earth through our own metaphysical connection to the non-physical, the power of our focus, and the way we can literally conjure up energies via our focus, intent, and our love. Love is the fuel. So this is going to be a reading all about those beautiful Venusian energies. We're going to start off with the charms, pull some cards, take what resonates, leave the rest. I read for grown-ups. You've all got your own higher guidance system, okay? And I know my Cherubima know this, but some people watch my channel and they think it's the same as other tarot stations. It's not. I'm a real gypsy. I've got real ancient Egyptian blood, real ancient Persian blood, and I'm here as a very, very old soul to teach humans about things. It does shock me that I've come through so much in my life, got this tarot station start started, and that people still control me. Like, they still try and control me from afar, right? And I've been controlled my whole life. It's part of my recovery, my personal private recovery in life to stick up for myself. So when people who don't know me say to me, Cleo Ra, please don't do this, diddler. You've got to understand what I'm teaching here. I'm teaching the ancient ways in the most simplistic way I can to as many people as I can. So free will dictates that I can do whatever I want, right? And with the Hayoka thing that goes on, a lot of the things that I do are opposite to what you would expect from the spiritual community. There's still too much control going on, especially when people put the love into something where they're trying to control me from afar. I don't let my mummy control me. I don't let my daddy control me. I don't let anyone but the most high God guide me, right? So I suggest all of you do the same thing. That being said, let's get on with it. We've got to be warriors in the garden, guys. We've got to do this, okay? Pillar of severity, pillar of mercy, two golden pillars that give us everything we want and get us through that eye of the needle. So let's go, let's do this. Starting off with the charms. Ooh. Wow. Someone's taking up a god or goddess positioning here with this big cat charm that's just flown onto the sixth house over here. I hope you guys can still see this. We've got the deer as well, which shows me that you're very gracefully gliding into your god-given god or goddess positioning. I can feel a lot of inspiration. I can feel someone just it's almost like you're digging for gems. It's like an Easter egg hunt. It's beautiful. But this is to do with what inspires you. This is to do with non-physical loot. Things that just keep giving. I'm getting the gift that keeps on giving. Where you just keep on finding inspirational things. And even though it's non-physical, it feels really satisfying. Like very kind of physical, you know. Let's see where this wants to fall. Okay. So we've got a letter Y. And this is in the seventh house. And I feel like someone's making a contract. I'm getting a year's time could be relevant. A nice, you know, succinct amount of time. Someone could be getting engaged. Okay, I'm getting the name Yasmin coming through. Yazer, Y-A-S-S-E-R. And we've got the cactus here as well. So something's got a lot of long-lasting staying power in a relationship. So I do feel like we are clearing out old energies and really allowing ourselves to anchor in to new expectations, new vibrations when it comes to love. We're consolidating a lot of stuff that maybe we thought we'd never get over. But the universe is making it easy for us. There are winds of change sweeping through our lives here. And just as I say that, I notice this beautiful ship's steering wheel here. And this is in the fourth house. So I feel like more people are becoming mobile with the way they live. Maybe living on boats, maybe living in vans, stuff like that. There's also a lot of traveling involved and I'm getting this message of wherever I take my heart is my home. So I feel like someone's got a lot of security knowing that their inner temple is always 
lit up within them. I'm getting that, you know, this is about having that flame lit inside of ourselves and knowing we always light our own way. So that's really beautiful. I'm getting angel here with this letter A. So someone's being really divinely protected on their travels. That's really beautiful. And it ties in with another message I've had about St. Christopher, which I've got to do as well. So look out for that reading. We've got the smiley face here, and this is in the third house of communication. We've got the musical note here, and what I'm getting is lots of happy, harmonic interactions here. You could be sharing a cup of tea or coffee with somebody, but I also feel like you're going to be making friendships with people who let their guard down and who really show you sides of themselves that... I feel like we're all bearing ourselves in ways that we wouldn't have done 10 years ago because our consciousness has evolved so much that things we would have maybe been, been hung up about 10 years ago... It means nothing to us anymore. I feel like things have, yeah, I'm hearing vamoosh, like vamoosh, like things just disappearing, vaporizing, right? In a way that we couldn't have imagined before. We've got the cookbook here, and this is in the 12th house, and I often get this coming out in this sort of positioning because lots of us are downloading things, and maybe you're writing a manual or a codex or some sort of instruction guide. Or maybe someone's sharing their experiences here because I'm getting this energy of you speaking your truth and finding great sacred power in speaking your truth. This could be about things that I'm getting no one else knows about, things you've kept bottled up, things you've kept hidden in secret. I'm getting that this could be to do with a Scorpio or Pluto cycle. Or you could have Pluto and Scorpio and we're doing things differently. What is taboo to others is not taboo to us. What feels uncomfortable to others is normal for us. You know, the fish that swims miles underwater doesn't think that it's abnormal to be that deep. And Pluto and Scorpio, we're like that. People think we go deep. But to us, it's just a walk in the park. It's our natural nature to see things from the top of the tree of life through that plutonic transformative lens. So someone's bringing their truth together in a way that's going to bring them great power, great satisfaction, great release. And again, there's that idea of abundance when you stand in your authenticity, not letting anyone judge whether you're being good or bad, not letting anyone else judge what you're conjuring up or telling you how to live your spiritual pathway because it's none of their business, right? And they do it to me on this channel, some of them. You know, a rare few, you know, not my cherubima, you guys feel my soul, but there's a rare few who like don't even know me and like, I pity people, I'm like, whoa, if this is what they're like to me on my channel and I'm a god, what are they like to the rest of society? They're rude, crazy people. Okay, we've got the fish here, and this is in the house of Sagittarius with the spider here. And this came up in a reading the other day, things dropping onto our lap, things falling from the heavens. Someone could have connections to Ireland, be planning on visiting Ireland. I'm getting... I. I I don't know if Dunkirk is in Ireland, but they're giving me the word Dunkirk for some reason. And I feel like someone could be taking an ancestral journey over water, perhaps. And I feel like it's your soul that's spurring you on here. I feel like, you know, you are really going deep in your roots, but also being guided. I'm seeing trinkets appearing on your pathway. Crazy little signs like a feather here, a coin there, a child's toy drop there. It's almost like things are dropping onto your pathway to, sh to show you which way to flow. That's what I'm getting here. We've got the sacred heart in the 10th house, along with this beautiful, I think this is the Taj Mahal, is it, guys? Let me know in the comments if you know. But either way, this represents a beautiful big palace. The 10th house is the house of what you represent, who you back up publicly, who you're connected to, who you love the most. This is the sacred heart. This is that Sanctu Sanctorum most precious house of finding the ones that you can roll with, the ones that you can ride with, the ones that you can really sync up your souls with here. And this is like a royal family thing, a reunion here, everything coming together beautifully, like the heart is being sealed up like a wall of love. Okay, so we've got the mittens coming out here in the 11th house. And there's this tropical bird that came up in my reading the other day. Someone is like a bird of paradise, a tropical bird, right? As we'd say in the UK. And I feel like someone's going to see you that way. They're going to handle you in a beautiful way. And this connects over here to the third house. Friendships are the most powerful thing you know meeting people at the soul level and not putting any labels on it and just letting your souls dance together and seeing what you magnetize from them and what they magnetize from you you know 
each connection we make is completely unique and we can conjure things from people that they haven't had conjured in years because we all hold invisible magnetic energies that bring different things out of different people and it's all very unique so i'm getting very unique soul connections that you know are gonna be very bearing this is like you're gonna bear your soul to each other in the most gentle way no self-consciousness here this is a really beautiful energy of just being so, you know, almost cherubima, you know, like childlike and gorgeous and being able to relax in the loot lounge in the heavenly sphere here. And again, lots of travel, angelically, divinely guided travel, you know, where you're shown which way to go, where you're inspired and uplifted and tink tinkly, you know, this is like a beautiful tinkly energy but also feeling very at home. The whole world is your home. Unity is coming through very powerfully here. And I really love it. And there's a unity in someone's self-image when they finally see themselves on the pages of a book and they, they finally, you know, maybe you read this book, you know, maybe you write a book and when you write a book, you know, you've got to leave it alone for a good few months to really see it objectively afterwards, right? And I feel like someone's going to do that. Maybe you've finished writing a book and you've put it away and you've ignored it for a while and you're going to get it out. If this is a book about your life and things you've been through, particularly if there's any trauma or any exposing of family things, even if you're not naming any names, it's not about that. It's not about demonizing people, but like it's about you exalting your soul. It's like you doing yourself justice with something. And this is going to really bring everything together. It's to do with this sacred heart. It's to do with co consolidating this chapter of your life and also spreading your angelic information in ways that can help others. They're saying if you can help but one person, that will ripple out into infinity. The one is the all and the all is the one. We've got G for goddess, G for God. Someone's taking up their real spiritual positionings here. And I almost didn't see this one. We've got a little rhino here. And this is in the eighth house of transformation. So this is easy for somebody. Someone's got a really beautiful, potent, plutonic, I would say, soul. Or they're activating the plutonic elements of their birth chart, their Pluto placement, in a really powerful way. They want me to go to the compass cards first here. So we're going to see what comes out. They want me to do north, south, east, and west. So show me north for my beautiful allies. Show me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Too many. Naughty cards. Okay, one. Okay, we've got blueprints here. So this is someone activating a much higher blueprint. This is someone really taking the leap, taking the initiative. Because I'm feeling someone swinging on monkey bars here, developing muscles they never knew they had. So maybe you are doing some outdoor adventures and stuff like that. Because I feel some real lean activity in the arms. And maybe this is symbolic, but I feel like someone's really got it going on. We've got the throat chakra here. I feel like someone's really athletic. But this is also a spiritual Tarzan, like Jupiter jungle energy where you're leaping for something in the most joyous way. We've got Lou over here. And this is in the elven realm, the elf fairy realm. So someone's really sinking in, like I was saying, about those satisfying nuggets of juicy information. There's nothing more satisfying than uplifting others, than empowering others, than knowing that you make a difference. And that's why I feel like someone's got the key to the loot here. Yeah, this is like a crystal rose quartz, smoky rose quartz kind of key that they're showing me. Someone has real instant access to this kind of fairy, fae realm, and they're getting all this juicy stuff. So they're saying, write this down, right? And I feel like you're going to be collecting trinkets. Someone's going to be collecting things on the road. And I feel like you do have this pagan gypsy kind of Britannic, whatever we want to call it, right? That European um, rustic way about you. And by that, I mean like that Lord of the Rings kind of Harry Potter vibe where you will pick things up off the road. You know, I know that God, the universe, the fairies, my ancestors leave little gifts for me. And also they want me to tell someone to look out for the numbers on the coins you find because those are indications from the spirit world of who's with you or significant events that you're moving your way through that have come back up for you to kind of get past them, things that you've ran past, things that you've done really easily. We've got the throat chakra here, and this is all about your integrity. Oh, beautiful, beautiful royal blue, because you're taking your royal god or goddess positioning. What's this? Sovereign self, yeah. For the, they're telling me the, 
the Eastern Wing. I don't know if someone's been watching something like Beauty and the Beast or something, or the Eastern Wing could mean something to you in a house you're renovating or somewhere you might be visiting. I feel like you're going to be picking up on energies if you visit a museum or a place of historical interest, perhaps a townhouse, something like that. You're going to be connecting with energies from a previous incarnation here. Okay, when Cleo Ra goes to museums, my spirit guides tell me to touch certain things. I'm not going to grasp myself up here, but uh, there's something going on like that here where you're going to touch something that's maybe behind a rope, who knows, and it's your birthright. Your spirit guides are going to direct you with this and tell you, stroke this, and you're going to download it via the touch. This is going to connect you with all the historical energies that are connected to that object through, ooh, through, through a long time, right? It's going to connect you to that other world. They're telling me Warehouse 13 for somebody. Relics hold energy. Relics are powerful. Let's see. Ten of Wands here underneath the loot. You're just collecting so much here. And it's passionate for you. They're telling me for somebody, you may uh, need to sleep more. You know, when you get so excited, you're not sleeping like as much as you would because you just feel high on life. We've got the Emperor here with his blueprints. Okay, male or female, this is you getting your blueprints, going into the non-physical. I feel like you've got a real physical hold in the non-physical. To you, it's like a gradient. And to you, you're so comfortable non-physically that you can feel things physically. Your clairsentience is off the charts. You are phenomenal. Okay, they're telling me you could feel your spirit guide animal uh, brushing up against you non-physically. You could feel it that physically because you're that skilled with this. Yeah, yin yang, completely connected here. You're not, you're not, you know, like a matrix up. You are the opposite of that. You have got the yin yang, yin, yin yang, perfectly synchronized in your soul. You are completely aligned with universal law. That's why this compass is coming out so beautifully here. Let's just, let's see this throat chakra. What do we need to know? Justice, doing yourself justice. And there's that book we were talking about. Something about what someone's writing or purging from themselves, or documenting. This could be a piece of artwork, but you're putting your soul into it. And it will be all your experiences, including, they're telling me, feelings of shame and guilt and confusion and taking anything that could be considered toxic or, or whatever. It's your divine experience and you're making something really beautiful out of it and giving yourself your divine justice, taking your throne symbolically and literally, they're telling me, as this master creator of your reality, we've got the eight of swords here. So no longer will you be silenced. No longer will you be chained. No longer will you be roped or bound. Something that was locked away inside you is turning outwards now. They're showing me Valcro ripping apart. So this could be something you're detaching from. Something that you never thought you'd be able to. You're finally seeing it differently. I'm getting that you're finally seeing it as if it happened to somebody else. And that's giving you your clarity and that's giving you your bearings here. Queen of Pentacles, I'm going to put that back in. But there could be a, a Queen of Pentacles type person who's relevant. Or this could be you, you know, developing that self-parental. I feel like it's self-parenting, self-mothering, giving yourself the honey and nectar from Venus all by yourself. But also they're showing me this energy sort of pouring off of you like a golden elixir, an ambrosia that's going to help other people on your sacred sovereign journey, they're telling me. Show me the sovereign self, please. Show me the sovereign self. Okay, four of cups here. And the magician. See, I'm feeling a sorrow coming off of this four of cups. And I do feel like this is someone's childhood or early experience, you know, where they felt like their love had been rejected, where they felt like they couldn't help someone that they wanted to help. Or where they felt powerless, right? And I feel like you're taking that back now with the magician. Where now you are the powerful one. And you're giving yourself confirmation of this through physical works. Art, music. And there's something about reflection. There's something about... I don't know if any of you have ever seen yourself on a video and not known that it was you for a split second. and thought, who's that? I thought, oh, that's kind of fit or whatever. And you, you saw yourself and you didn't realize it was you. It's kind of like what I'm getting with this therapeutic work, with this catharsis, with this shamanic experience of transmuting pain to power. I feel like you're going to see it through the lens as if you were somebody else. This could feel like an out-of-body experience, but it's the clarity you need. 
It's the intellectual power that you need. We've got the high priestess here right next to the blueprints. So someone's all balanced out with their pillar of severity, that stream of consciousness and the pillar of mercy. And what's this? The Knight of Wands with the Nine of Cups on the bottom of the deck. So you're turning pain to power and this is becoming your heaven on earth here. I'm really pleased to see this because you're getting the loot in the non-physical ways by being such a fairy soul. I can feel your beautiful fairy soul, especially with this doe energy. They're telling me to say doe. You know, there could be a delicacy to your soul or your mental imaginings or the way you alchemize your feelings and your emotions. All this could very well be your physical body. It'll be different for everyone. But there's something about your delicacy taking shape here, especially with this high priestess, knight of wands. This is a card of pure confidence, total courage and, you know, being so full of your own higher self that you don't even need courage. You're just operating the way God wants you to or the way your higher self wants you to the way we always intended to be before life started smacking us about right we're reclaiming our cherubim power and that's what someone's doing here I'm hearing your love of life is so beautiful we've got the queen of wands here Aries energy harnessing your full power for the springtime is what I'm getting with this. So happy birthday, they're saying to anyone whose birthday is in April. I feel like someone has a birthday in April um, and you're going to be really winning with this cathartic work you're doing. And uh, I feel like it's going to be, they're saying words can't express. Spirit is saying, oh, how can I put this with the energy that's coming through? They're getting quite delicate with this book that someone's doing or this work that someone's doing to do themselves justice when it comes to some sort of trauma or some sort of experience they've had. So they're saying words don't do justice to what we know you've experienced. And please have faith and hope that even if there's still a frustrated, you know, version of you in there somewhere thinking, how can I ever truly explain myself? Who will ever really understand me? Because even when we put the words on paper, there's still that feeling sometimes of, God, I'll never be able to fully explain myself. They're saying, we saw everything, we know everything, we were with you every minute of it. The ancestors know everything you went through and they want to give you super, super affirmation that yes, they do understand every little feeling you had and everything you went through. So someone doesn't have to worry about being misunderstood because the divine realm understand us better than any anyone ever could and it's really beautiful this reading that I'm picking up on I'm getting that someone's getting new light codes coming through because uh, they're showing me a download that I had yesterday they're repeating it for me and it's almost like a clay tablet with light being carved into it and I feel like that's relevant to someone who is going into this magical crystalline cave of their own soul and connecting to the ethers so so powerfully I'm gonna leave it there I feel like you've got so much going on physically here with the two of pentacles things you're experimenting with full full turbo confidence and that sacred heart keeping you completely cloaked and floating in that divine balm of energy my love so I feel like you're getting out there and you're getting stuck into life the way oh the way we really love to do I love you, my darling. They're saying your intuition is perfectly honed. Take care and be assured that you're, you know, you're you're fully guided and you're fully loved. Lots of love, my darlings. Mwah.